If you would like to see how I made this Autumn Memories Junk Journal step by step, just keep on watching. This is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So I will be using images from the Digital Collage Club, which is a membership-based website with thousands of royalty-free digital craft supplies. Once you sign up, either for a year or a lifetime membership, you will get instant access. All images are created exclusively for this club. You get new images each week and you're able to sell the craft items you created with these images. So as I mentioned, there are two options available, a membership for one year or a lifetime, which means you pay once and have access to all the images and tutorials for your whole life. You can find discount codes for both types of memberships linked below in the description box. I would like to point out that I do receive a commission if you use these links. So it's also a huge help for my small creative business. As always, thank you in advance if you sign up or if you have joined in the past using my link. Please note that in order to use my codes for the discount, you need to use the link below, otherwise it will not work. So I'm going to start off by tearing some book pages out of this vintage children's book. I'm definitely going to use this cute cover for another journal project, but now I just need the insides. These book pages are quite thick. So in my case, I'm going to use three of these pages for one journal page. I think it's easiest to tear them out always from the middle of the signature where you see the stitching and you can just easily tear them out like this without tearing the edges too much and then you can just tear them in half. And so I use three pages for one journal page and I just keep those together. My little journal is going to have eight single pages. So that's how many I need times three always. So in total, 24 book pages. Then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew multiple circles on these pages, always sewing right through the three pages. And I'm doing that exactly how Louise Heinzel was showing this in her recent video, which was part of the Fast Flow Stitching collaboration, which she organized together with Joy Diffie. And when I saw her making those circles and her explanations, something just clicked in me because I always struggle with circles and stitching circles was something I just could not understand how to do if you don't have a special foot or a free motion stitch thing or anything. But she shows you how to do it with your regular sewing machine. Nothing fancy needed whatsoever. And I just love it and I'm obsessed. So that's why I wanted to make this journal. <laughs> I will show you how I stitch one of those pages. But as I said, I encourage you to watch Louise's video. She explains everything in detail and in a way that anybody can do this. So I have all of my eight journal pages sewn. Obviously you can use a different colored thread. I just wanted to go with this nice dark red. Also, I want to mention if you want to make a journal like this, but you don't have a sewing machine or you don't feel comfortable yet with your sewing machine, why not just use a pen if you want a similar effect? So for example, I have here a black marker 0.8. And I can just as well 
do this with my marker. Just try to make a messy, uneven oval or circle, whatever you want to do. And you would have a similar effect. Obviously, you could do it in red or whatever color you want. You won't get the texture, but at least you'll have the same image. But you can also even do this same kind of journal without this. Just do the shape that I'm doing and you'll be fine. In either case, if you use the marker or you don't make any ovals or circles, you need to glue together a few pages. If you have thick ones like mine, then three should be enough. If you only have thinner book pages, whether you're doing the sewing or not the sewing, you will need more book pages because you want your journal pages to be sturdy. So if I only had thin book pages, I would probably use five or six book pages. So if I'm going to do this without the sewing, I would glue the pages together, but I wouldn't glue them together, putting glue on the full page. I would only put glue where the sewing would be. So for example, here, of course, these pages are only held together where the sewing is. So there's nothing in the middle and there's nothing here that's holding that together. That will be important later on. So same thing here. I would only put glue here on the back side. Sorry, I, <laughs> I scribbled here. I would only put glue here on the back side where my marks are. Or if I don't have any marks, I would just put my glue in a circle or an oval and then glue them together. And I do that page for page, depending on how many book pages I want on top of each other. So now we need to do the tearing part. And I'm going to do this just slightly different than how Louisa did it in her video. I have three pages. So the first one, I'm going to start off fairly closely to my circle or oval. So I'll kind of go with how it goes naturally, but I want to stay along this shape of the oval. I don't need to go all the way to the stitching like Louisa did, but if that happens in parts, then that's totally fine but I'm trying to make pages that are just a little bit bigger. So that's why I don't want to start off by tearing all the way to where the stitching is. So that's why it's important if you don't do the stitching, but if you do the faux stitching or no marks at all, that you don't glue the whole page because then you can't do this tearing. So that's one layer. And then the second layer, we're going to do a little bit bigger. And there's one important detail that we need for our journal page. So on this side, where we're going to have the spine of the signature, we want to have a sort of straightish edge. So I'm only tearing until here and instead of continuing to tear here i'm going to leave this part there so then i'll continue from the other side and then i have this edge right here which is enough and now for the third and final layer i'm again going to leave a straight part here on the edge and i'm going to leave that actually to be a little bit bigger if they're the same, then that's probably even better. And again, I'm just going to tear this a little bit bigger than the previous circle. And on this side here, I do not want the straight edge. So I'm going to make sure to tear that accordingly. So this is what my page looks like. I have a straight edge on this side and I need to do this for all eight pages. So once you have all of your eight pages torn and hopefully they're all going to look a little bit differently because I think that's the charm. Now we're going to start connecting the pages. We're going to choose two of these pages for the cover. 
doesn't really matter which ones. I'm just going to take the first two and set those aside for the moment. And then I'm going to connect always two and two together. So I have three inside pages for my journal. So I'm always going to connect two together using some fabric. I have this thin fabric and I think a thinner one would work better because it will just be easier to flip the pages. And I already cut a strip down. This is, what is this, maybe an inch or so. And now I just need to cut the strips according to the size that I have these. And again, they're all going to be different. So I'm just going to always cut it according to which one of the two is the longer sides. So I'll just put it here, grab my fabric scissors, and then I'll snip it off. It could also be just a little bit longer than the height. And that piece will go on there. And then I'll do the same for the others. So this strip is going to be longer because this here is longer. What I love about this is that there's no measuring. It's just kind of eyeballing everything. So that's number two. And then here you see there's quite a big difference between the two sizes of the spine, but it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to cut a strip which is a little longer than the bigger one of the two. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the two that I've put aside for the cover, but we're going to attach those a little bit differently. Okay, so again, I'll put these for the cover aside and these three we can all do the same way. Then I'm going to take some textile glue. If you don't have textile glue, it's not a big deal at all. You can just use regular glue. And I'll take my first two pieces. I'm putting them together so that I always have the front of the stitching on the front side throughout the whole journal, but of course you can mix them up by turning some of the pages around, however you want to do it. So I have both facing up and I'm going to turn it around and then I'll add some glue. I have a flat brush here in some water and I'm adding just a little bit of water with my brush to my glue because my fabric is so thin that I don't need my glue to be that thick. So then I'll just put some glue here on the edge. Then I'll put my fabric strip down so that approximately half is on this piece. Then I'll go over it again to make sure it's stuck down really well. And then I'll just turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. Flip that over and go over it again with glue. So then you can either let this air dry or you can also use a heat gun to dry it. I'm just going to stand it up like this for now and I'll do the exact same thing for the other two. So again, I have them facing up. I'll turn it around, add my glue. I'll make sure they're lined up well. And I'm putting glue also on the paper that is sticking out from the bottom. Then I'll put my fabric strip over that, go over it again, some more glue. Turn it around, do the same thing on the other side. Once I have all of those done, I'm going to do something similar for my cover pieces. So for my cover, I actually want the front of the stitching to be on both sides of the cover. So the front is fine, but the back one, I'm going to just flip around 
so that I have the outside on the outside. My, yes, my text is going to be upside down, but actually I think that's fun. Why not? If you don't want your text upside down, what you need to think about when you tear this is that you have the straight edge on this side instead of on this side, then you can have the text facing the right side up. So I'm flipping this around. So I have my straight edges here and I'm going to glue this on just a little bit differently. So again, I'll start off by putting the glue here. And then I'm not going to put half of it, but I'll only put maybe about a third on this cover. And I will explain why in a moment. And I'll turn it around. Put glue here again. Now, instead of just folding this over, I want to leave a gap in the middle to leave room for the signatures. So again, it's going to be maybe about a third that I'm gluing down. Adding the glue on top. Now you can see here the gap. That will leave room to add the signatures in without it becoming a gator mouth. Once everything is dry, we can assemble the journal. So I have my cover here, which has the space in between. And I'm just going to insert these like I would make a normal signature. So I'm just going to put one into the other. So I'll just put one here. Then I'll put one inside that. And another one inside that. So then we close it and we make sure everything is where we want it to be. So basically this is just one signature. They're all stacked in each other. And I want to make sure they are aligned well at the spine. And now you can either sew this together with your three hole or five hole pamphlet stitch by hand. Or what I'm going to do is because I only have fabric in the middle here. And this can easily be stitched with my sewing machine. So that's what I'm going to do because that's going to be super quick and easy. So I simply ran a running stitch with my smallest stitch available on my machine over the middle of the spine. And that's it. I tore a bit here while I was tearing, um, but that's okay. I can fix that by gluing something over it. So everything lays flat. And because we have a little bit of space here on the spine, we don't have a gator mouth. It's flat. And I also tried one with a zigzag stitch for the spine, like this. And it works just as well. You see the stitches on some of the pages, like right here, but still they open perfectly. So that would be another option. If you want to see more of the stitching inside, then please just use a zigzag stitch. I love how cute and messy that looks as well. And now it's time to get a little bit messy. Yay. <laughs> So I'm going to do what Louisa did. I'm going to start off by just using some water to make all my pages wet. And I'm using quite a lot of water like Louisa suggested. So now this whole thing is very wet and we're going to let this really soak up the water. That reminds me now, if you have used a marker to draw your circles, then please make sure it is not a water soluble marker because otherwise this will be a disaster now. <laughs> so let this really soak in. And then we're going to add some color. Louisa used the Distress Oxide sprays by Ranger and Tim Holtz, but I'm going to do this with watercolors. I have this set here. It's by Sakura and it's called Koi Watercolors. You can find something like this on Amazon this set is not very expensive. 
You can use any water soluble media you have. It could be acrylic paints even, as long as you keep them relatively thin so that they can just flow here. And now I'm going to have a look at my printouts of this fun autumn kit. I'm going to see what colors do I have here. And it's like coffee neutral tones. It's a beautiful mustard yellow. It's some beautiful muted reds, greens. So those are the colors I'm going to go with for the base of my journal. I'll start off by wetting the whole palette. And then I'm just going to play around and see what happens. So maybe I'll start off with some yellow, that yellow orangey thing. And I'll just add plenty of water. I'll spritz some more. I really want this to spread nicely. And I'm just going to really just make a mess. <laughs> Mix in some red, some brown. And then just move it around. And then I'm going to do that with all of my pages. And I want my fabric to get some color as well because I want it all to be cohesive. So actually here, I want to add some specifically to the cover, I mean to the spine. And just have fun. You can always add more color. See here I have some dripping down now so I can just press my book into that and just enjoy the mess. That's something I don't do often. <laughs> got some blue on it that's totally fine it's a nice variation of color actually why not add some here as well Now I see that a lot of the color actually has disappeared <laughs> from the inside. No, I had such beautiful layers. Okay, we need to do this differently. But we have a nice base color now. That's okay. We'll just keep working on it. So Louisa crumbled up her pages. But this is not what I want for mine. But what I do want, I want these edges to be torn and curled up. So I will do that. Curl the individual layers up and tear them in places. But I do want to make sure that my spine here stays intact, of course. And I also want to tear the hole. So I'm going to just tear that from the back side. And we'll fold up the edges. We can separate the layers. That will give a nice peekaboo hole, I think, so that we can see whatever image we put underneath. So I have this now. Then I'll add some more color on top. And then I think it makes sense to dry this so that I don't keep messing this up while I'm working on the other pages. So I have dried this with my heat gun a little bit. It is still very, very, very damp. Obviously, if you decide to do this with ink or oxide sprays, those are going to be much more intensive than the watercolors. But I just wanted to show you that you don't always need all the fancy stuff. <laughs> it can also work like this. 
I'm not going to worry about the back sides for now because I think I'm going to be covering most of those up anyway. So I will continue to do the same thing like I did here for the cover for the other pages. So I'm just going to roll these up, tear them in some places, crinkle them up. I want them to look messy and grungy. I'm not doing it so much on the third and final layer because I mean that is also our page so I don't want to go overboard on that one and again I'll just poke a hole you don't have to do that with all of your pages I'm going to use this you could leave some of course without holes We can also tear some of that hole away completely. And then I'll add some more color, but this time I'm not going to do it as wet as I did the first time around. I like this like purpley blue. I think that adds such a great contrast. And this has turned into mud, which is great. That's exactly what I need here. <laughs> Let's add some red. And you could intentionally leave some of these folded back parts white if you wanted. That also provides a beautiful contrast. Or you can just color all of them. So again, I will dry this before I go on to the next page. So once I get to my last page, which is my cover page, I want to be sure to do it from this side and not from this side like i've been doing these here because obviously this is the back so we want this side to be the pretty one <laughs> so i'll do the same thing here as well See, I just tore a piece of that out and I have some of this thread hanging bare now, but that's totally fine. That just adds to the grunginess. There's no need to panic. <laughs> And if you have a feeling that all this extra material is too bulky, then you could just tear the middle one out, for example. It's so fun to just mess around with these paints. You don't have to overthink anything. Oh, I forgot this edge. So now I have a journal <laughs> with a hole that goes through the whole journal. <laughs> Let me just flip this through so you can just have a peek. Obviously, this is still super damp. And so I think the best thing to do before we continue working on it is to just stand it up and to let it dry overnight. Like this. Mwah! Mwah!